seven signs your rewrite is trash. Let's get back to basics. The main goal of rewrites is to create something that is superior to the original source. If you're just rewriting to get content or produce a lot of content for a blog or website, you're doing it wrong. You really are. Because when that is your attitude, you're simply just trying to stuff or fill out the website. Sadly, there are lots of websites out there with tons of posts and zero traffic. It's easy to see why. Much of the materials, if not all, that is found on the, those websites do not add value to the lives of people who read those blog posts or articles. Also, when people stuff websites full of rewrites, they save time on research. But they leave a lot of the, the tremendous value of rewriting on the table. In fact, a lot of people who uh, publish rewrites don't even think about these benefits. They just produce content because they, they believe that the, the more stuff they have online, the more Google will in the index and somehow, some way, this translates to a lot of money down the line. If, o if only things were that simple. Unfortunately, today's internet users are smart and very discriminating. If they feel for even a second that they are wasting their time, they're going to click that back button. And guess what? Google will rub salt into your wounds by penalizing you. That's how sophisticated Google's search algorithm is. Your website will actually get penalized if people don't stick around. This is called the rank brain update. The stakes are high. Make no mistake about it. This is why you cannot afford to rewrite the same way as before. Here are seven signs your rewrite is trash. Sign number one, you sound like a professor. Please understand that there's a big difference between writing for consumers online and writing a term paper for your high school or college. Know that difference. Make sure you understand your audience and you phrase and position your ideas in such a way that your audience would love your materials. If you talk to them like a professor, they're going to get turned off. Too many of us still have nightmares of our high school years. A lot of us don't like school. So when you come across an, on, an online piece of content, whether it's a blog post or an article, and it reads like something a professor or high school teacher wrote, what would you feel? Most people get turned off, and that's why they don't even write, much less read this material. Num sign number two, you use the passive voice. If you string several sentences together and you use the passive voice, you're going to lose your audience. They want something active. They want to be pushed along because, hey, let's face it, most of us are busy. In fact, a lot of people wish there were more hours in a day. That's how busy people are. They have better uses of their time. Don't make them feel that they're wasting their time reading your stuff because you write in a passive, dull, boring, and lifeless way. Push them along by using active sentence structures. Think of your headings as well as your sentences much like the headings of your resume. You remember writing your resume, right? When the HR person reads your resume, you write in a way that pulls them in, and this is the active voice. Get the reader involved. Turn them on. Unfortunately, that's hard to do when you're using the passive voice. Sign number three, 
Your work is full of long winding sentences. I get it. You would like to pack as much value in a sentence as possible. You think the, such long winding sentences have so much value that the reader can't help but appreciate it. The problem is, you cannot make too many assumptions about the people reading your stuff. Not everybody has your education level. In fact, most people are not all that aware of the details as well as the background of the information you're presenting to them. In many cases, this is the first time they've come across the materials that you uh, want to fully describe and expand on. This is why it's really important to phrase things in as simple in the, in the simplest terms possible. Try to step, step away from the natural tendency to, uh, of trying to impress people with long compound sentences. The idea behind that, of course, is to showcase how intelligent and experienced you are. Fight that temptation. Assume that you are talking to people who have absolutely no idea about the specific topic you're talking about, so you're going to have to step them through. If you do the, if you do, if you write with this assumption, you write in a clearer way. You don't make leaps of logic. You don't automatically assume that the person you're talking to is a complete expert. This ensures that your text is clear, easier to understand and easier to follow. Sign number four. You produce large scary paragraph blocks. If you're like most people, you probably don't like reading large books. Welcome to the club. Most people believe that they have better things to do. Not all of us are natural readers. Be at peace with this fact. Knowing this, please understand that the vast majority of people that your text is going to be shown to will not react positively if you format your text using large paragraph blocks. I'm talking about 10 to 15 sentences crammed into one paragraph. Break them down. Use subheadings as much as possible Format your paragraphs and fully develop your ideas so that each paragraph contains maybe one or two sentences. Sign number five. People get the feeling they are being talked to instead of being engaged with. If you're writing product reviews, it's easy to get taken in by your need to make money. As you probably already know, there are a lot of blog posts out there that review all sorts of products so they can get the reader to get excited about the products being reviewed and possibly buy one of the featured items. Pretty straightforward. Very common. The problem is, if you do not engage the people that you're trying to sell to, you will come off like a very pushy salesman. You probably don't need me to remind you of how most people would react to such pushy salespeople. It's not a very positive experience. Avoid that by drawing people in. Ask questions and answer them anticipate what kind of concerns potential buyers would have. Present this information in a way that is objective and appeals to people's emotions. The moment you, you get somebody to think that you are trying to fool them or you're trying to push them in a certain direction is the moment they will turn against you. Instead of closing a sale, People are just going to click the, the back button 
and look for a more objective looking review. So avoid this problem altogether by engaging with your readers by asking questions and otherwise anticipating their thought processes. Don't just assume that they will like what you have to offer because you said so. It doesn't work that way. Sign number six. Your piece doesn't flow smooth enough to push people to action. Depending on the kind of rewrite you're, you, uh, you're working on, you might have to work on your call to action. For example, if you are rewriting a review, either of one product or several products, ultimately, people reading such materials want to make a decision. That's why they type in keywords like best blender or best vaporizer. They're looking for a suggestion that they can take action on. Unfortunately, if you write in a disjointed way or there is no unifying theme, people will find it hard to be called to action. Even if you write call to action text into your materials, it, they're going to stick out like a sore thumb. They're not going to do the job that you intended them to do. Everything must flow smoothly and the way to do this is, of course, to get people to develop a certain emotional state when they are reading your materials. When it comes to product reviews, you want people to feel that you have revealed the ins and outs and inner workings of a particular product type so that they can now make a clear decision that will deliver the value that they're looking for. This applies to blenders as well as uh, to people looking for apartments. They're looking for a certain result and this often comes with a sense of emotional clarity. Before they're under a lot of stress because they don't know the first thing about the product or service that you are reviewing. But after reading your materials, you must make them feel good enough about their ability to comprehend and piece um, key points of information together so they can make a decent decision. That's the bottom line. Get people to feel that they're making an informed decision based on what you've written. This is very hard to do when your stuff doesn't flow and it's disjointed, choppy, or even self-contradictory. That's right. Some of the stuff that you wrote cancels out the other portions of your materials. Sign number seven. People don't walk away inspired. I don't care whether you're writing a how-to guide or a consumer guide or product review. At the end of the day, your material is supposed to produce an emotional state. You have to understand, and I, and, I, and I hate repeating myself, people are busy. When they are looking for a particular product, they probably would come across review after review, consumer guide after consumer guide, and in many cases, they're confused. A lot of that stuff is technical. Deep down inside, they just want it to be a simple case of liking something, finding enough about it, and then pulling the trigger. That's what they're looking for. Your job is to make them feel that you have spelled everything out in such a clear way that they can safely make an informed decision. Let's not kid ourselves. Nine times out of ten, they already know what they're looking for. They're just looking for they're just looking to be reassured that they are going in the right direction. That is your job. Knowing what you know, you should get people to feel inspired by your rewrite. They must feel that this process that seemed to start out so confusing and even intimidating is actually quite simple, 
easy and even intuitive. If you're able to make them feel inspired and operate at that level, your text will, would have done its job. The final word. Keep these seven signs in mind. If you wrote a piece using several sources or just one main source that has at least one of these signs, your work is trash. I don't say that to discourage you, nor do I say that with a sense of inferiority. But let's be honest, if you want to succeed as an online writer, an online marketer, or anything else, you have to learn how to sell. Unfortunately, the presence of even one of these signs will work to drive away eyeballs instead of attracting them.